Now, I know it's a film. There's some uh, creative <laughs> license that's taken. But just so you know, statistically, most of those people there would have been slaves. You all know about the Woman King. None of you like it. All right. <laughs> We've established that. Not a clue. But here's the thing. Not just because it's woke and not because it's this, you know, sort of feminist tale. And OK, now this film, of course, tells the story of the uh, the uh, Ago uh, Agoji, I believe Agoji. the Agoji. Yeah. Uh, it's this all female fighting unit in uh, the African kingdom. And by the way, this sort of spreads across different countries, just to be clear. So we'll be talking about the tribe. So unless you try and, you know, lawyer us on this, I understand that it's not just based on geographical borders, but the tribe specifically or the people, the Dahomey. Uh, so here's just sort of for people who don't know what the film is all about. When it rains, our ancestors weep for the pain we have felt in the dark hulls of sheep bound it's for condensation clouds. Shores. When the wind blows, our ancestors push us to march into battle against those who enslave us. When it thunders, our ancestors demand we rip the shackles of doubt from our minds and fight with courage. We fight not just for today, but for the future. Where you can enslave we a record number of people are there the too. We are of victory. We are the blade of freedom. Now, I know it's a film. There's some uh, creative <laughs> license that's taken. But just so you know, statistically, most of those people there would have been slaves. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Just to be clear, just like I know you thought, you know, Beauty and the Beast was uh, true to form uh, historically. Mm. No, no, Mary J. Blige, who folds into a bookcase, whatever the hell she is, an armoire, whatever she is. Yeah, yeah, armoire. Whatever they call it, like a powder, room powder. A uh, buffet. But yes, exactly. She would have been, uh, she would have been a slave as well in 1740s France. Just to be clear, hashtag Oscar so white. So this has received rave reviews, of course, on Rotten Tomatoes, right? 94% from critics, 99% from audience, oh. which uh, I'm willing to bet that they've changed the algorithm there with uh, audience reviews. Yeah, the New York Times praised the film when they review saying, the women are their own greatest weapons. Uh. <laughs> and among everything else, it addresses the woman king is about strong, dynamic black women, their souls, minds, and bodies. Okay, first off, hit the like button if you can see where this is going. <laughs> if you know the film is whitewashed, yeah. Uh, if I mean, and, and by the way, to say that this is offensive would be to say that uh, uh, Mr. Was it Mr. Unioshi and Breakfast at Tiffany's was a maybe a little off color. Yes. <laughs> First off, women are their own greatest weapon. OK, now let's get maybe if you're talking about like women who own slaves in the Homi tribes, by the way. <laughs> Maybe if that's what you're discussing, you mean like they're their own greatest weapon because they have like a mountain of slaves behind them. They have so many slaves, it's like World War Z on the wall. Yeah. So this <laughs> is the issue. Slavery is bad. We all agree. Okay? It's bad that the United States engaged in slavery. No one disagrees with that, just to be clear. Our primary problem is that there are more slaves today than ever in recorded history. That's a fact. And our problem is that we talk often in school about how the United States was built off the backs of slaves. But if you look at the numbers, it's really not true. You can go and search or go on Mug Club for the band segments. I don't think it's still on YouTube where we actually compare the development of the South with slavery versus the North. And slavery actually impeded progress, economic progress in the United States, because it turns out that a lot of slaves who are forced, not the most ingenious workers, right? These people don't have an incentive to work particularly hard. You look at the cotton gin. I believe that came from the North. There are a bunch of uh, innovations that came from the North where there were people who were free who were working, right, because of a voluntary exchange of goods and services. Yeah. But if you look at a lot of these African nations, and certainly if you look at the Middle East, Asia, where there is still slavery, by the way, their economy required, the, founda the bedrock of the economy was slavery. As a matter of fact, if we didn't purchase slaves from them, they probably would have had n no international trade of which to speak. Are you saying that it wasn't the colonial oppression? Not exactly. Okay, gotcha. No, no one is disagreeing that slavery was wrong and that slavery right. plays a role in American history. Why do we whitewash, though, slavery that still goes... If you want to help the world, let's not talk about puberty blockers for six-year-olds and, you know, calling CPS and the parents who don't administer them. Let's talk about slavery going on throughout. The, but to do that, you have to acknowledge the past mm. and you have to acknowledge the present and you have to acknowledge that we committed an evil in engaging in slavery, but we also ended it. We eradicated one of the greatest evils in the Western world. So... Let's go through the claims, basically, and these are implicit in the film. So one of the premises, a claim first, is uh, that the, Dahom the Dahomey tribe, I hope I'm saying that right, because I'm like, Did that, is that where Homie came from? The homies? Like rolling with the homies? <laughs> <laughs> they were a decent people with a beautiful way of life, and they were these warrior kings. Sorry, yeah. queens. Well, female king, go woman king, whatever. It's stupid. So here's the truth. Uh, they were an incredibly barbaric tribe. Yeah. In a way that you can't fathom here in the Western world. 
And the actual Dahomey Kingdom was uh, unbelievable. They were an unbelievably big player in the slave trade. So here's according to National Geographic, not a right wing propaganda rag. No. It's estimated that from the 1720s until 1852, when the British imposed a naval blockade, Dahomey's rulers sold hundreds of thousands of people from neighboring tribes and nations to the British, French, Portuguese, and others. Hundreds of thousands. Now, if someone sells you something, for example, that is faulty, let's say you buy, let's say you buy a used car and it's defective. Do you blame the person who purchased it? And I'm not comparing people to a car. I'm just using this as an analogy, just to be clear. Or do you blame the person who committed the wrong in lying in the sale? Why don't we blame the people, at least equally, if not, I would say, weigh it more on their side, who captured people, enslaved them, and sold them, as opposed to the people who purchased them? I just think that we need to have an equal distribution of blame. So the Dahomey tribe, by the way, they also instituted not just slavery, large-scale human sacrifices. They saved the decapitated heads, genitals of their enemies. And took them back to the villages with them. What do you do with those? I understand the heads, the skulls. I mean, you that make a, a trophy warning. case, yeah. stupid. Yeah, but the Sun-dry genitals? them, jerky? I mean, some are bigger than others, right? So yeah. You, just you put the big ones throughout. on the top. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't understand. It's like, okay, yes. After I'm dead, you're going to cut that off and take it back. Okay, what, you've never fair. walked into my house, seen a rhino head next to my... Slave penis. Rhino Think about it. There was someone's job was to <laughs> sift through the penises. Yeah, yeah. So in the movie, Viola Davis's character uh, begs King uh, King Gezo. I do Gezo, like Viola Davis to King stop Gezo. the slave trade and focus on palm oil, which is kind of just a funny sort of ultimatum. It's like mm, hundreds of thousands of slaves, <laughs> right? Palm oil. Hundreds of thousands of slaves. Palm oil. Ooh, tough choice. <laughs> Here's something else too. A naval blockade by the British in the 1850s. They, that's what forced Dahomey to yeah. move off the slave trade and focus on palm oil. Again, a big part of slavery being ended outside of the United States where there was, and there is an economic argument too. A lot of people will say if you look at Abraham Lincoln, he didn't necessarily, he wasn't, he wasn't progressive by today's standards, but part of it was economically motivated, but there was a moral component to we cannot have our constitution and all men created equal and have slavery. In a lot of other areas of the world, the only reason they stopped slavery was for economic reasons. It was the market that forced them to move to something else like palm oil. Yeah, and by the way, so they 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 say they talk a lot about freedom, like freedom. You know, we get to be our own people. We get to no, 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 no. They they lived by the code slave or be enslaved. Right, right. You either enslave somebody else or you're going to be enslaved by them. Right. right. That, that was how they lived their life. This was no beautiful let let live kind of culture out there. Well, I think this is one of those things, and, and uh, Jordan Peterson talks about this quite a bit, but we've discussed it quite a bit. You have no clue as to what human history is like. Right now, this is the most peaceful time. For example, people are furious with Ukraine. Uh, sorry, furious with Russia, with what they've done to Ukraine. Yeah. Pardon me. Why? Well, because they're being violent. They're being violent with a nation that most people would say, you know, they haven't been violent with them. Now, of course, there's a land dispute. We won't get into the micropolitics of it. That being said, at no point throughout human history would someone have said, hey, hold on a second, you're reprehensible. Why? Because you're trying to take over a nation for their resources. People would have said, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let the best country win. Let the, and by best, we do mean that might made right throughout all of human history. Yeah. This is really a very, very small window in the realm of human history where it's actually considered to be uh, an anomaly, where it's, it's not the norm. It has always been the norm. It has been the rule throughout all of human history. Pretty much no exceptions, to be clear. Here's another claim that they make, that the Dahomey in this, this film, I haven't seen it, just to be clear. Usually I can make it. I couldn't stomach no. it. No. I watched about 10 minutes. Uh, no. I saw the trailer and I was like, nope. Right. And I didn't know it existed. Yeah, I, I, I found out because I, I read articles. But the truth is, I don't see teaser trailers a lot anymore. Wow. I don't think of theatrical releases as big releases like I used to. Right. I thesaurus woman king and it came up queen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a word for it. Here's another claim that they make in the film. That the Dahomey valiantly fought Western invaders trying to take their freedom. Of course, that's untrue. Here's a clip. Fight. Or we die. Ready for war? Where you Oh gosh. I have to see another leaping sword swipe. To be a warrior, you must kill your tears. Little Lawrence of Arabia vibe. Now, here's 
that would be bad enough if it was just inaccurate, right? Where you were sort of whitewashing. Okay, we know that every, everywhere, slavery existed everywhere. It's actually worse than that. Here's the truth. Not only were they not fighting off Western invaders who were trying to enslave them, the Agoji actually battled. They actually fought the French who were actively trying to abolish slavery in the tribe. <laughs> they were fighting to keep on enslaving people. Yes. And also, by the way, <laughs> so the French were saying, we need to abolish slavery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the film doesn't really acknowledge that fully. Right. Also, unlike what you see in the film, uh, the French wiped out the Goji in a matter of hours. <laughs> oh, so oh. so they're the, hold on. So, so it wasn't just a sneak attack bloodbath? <laughs> With a giant John Woo jump leap. Like, by the way, you can't jump and you don't have leverage when you're in the air also, with a sword. Like, you know what happens when you do you've that? You've never seen somebody, my style. Yeah, somebody just holds a spear up and says, thank you. Exactly. <laughs> you're skewered. Good job. So wait a minute. They said that this is the most fearsome fighting female force in the world. And it hours. lasted two hours or so? <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> oh, okay. no. We see you've set your Timex. <laughs> All dead. So, yeah. You just hear a gun. They're like, we're going back. Yes. All right, bye. <laughs> and this is the issue here. There is a compulsion from the left. They view the world through the lens, again, of, of oppression. And so if you are an underdog, you must be morally correct. You must be in the moral. Uh, you must have the moral high ground, I should say. Mm -hmm. This is why you see them support Palestine. Regardless of where you line up with Israel-Palestine. None of us would uh, deny that Palestine, even if you support, that there have been more morally reprehensible actions taken. It's certainly Hamas, right? If you certainly look at their charter and the eradication of Jews, if you look at, for example, Iran, if you look at right now when they still support a lot of nations where there are still slave trades, just to be clear, uh, you look here, they say, well, hold on a second, this, uh, this, this tribe, the Agoji, they must have been morally correct. Why? The truth is they started from, they were wiped out in hours and worked backwards. How can we turn them into heroes? Oh, there were women. Let's look at the different groups of oppression. When the fact is they were actually oppressing people by not only enslaving them, but fighting off the people who wanted to liberate those slaves to one degree or another. And the good news is they lost in record time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Everything about this film is wrong. Watch Louder with Crowder live, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern.